Today we are going to look at another great lens, the TT Artisan 35mm f1.4. I didn't plan to buy it, it is kind of a spur of the moment thing, simply because I was so happy about the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2 lens that I bought a couple of months ago, and also because of how inexpensive it is. So I thought, why not give it a try? So here I am today reviewing this tiny little 35mm f1.4 manual lens. This tiny lens weighs only 180 grams. It's lighter than my smartphone, and the size goes perfectly with a small APS-C camera. This is how it looks like compared with my Sony 18-105 lens only half the size, so it's really travel friendly. It's made completely of metal, even the lens cap. It's a screw-on cap, which doesn't fall off easily. I kind of like that. It's a manual-only lens, so there's absolutely no autofocus. And you have the focus ring near the camera body and the aperture ring at the end of the lens. When you turn the aperture ring, you will have the hard stop and you can hear the click sound so you probably won't want to turn it when you are taking a video but when you turn the focus ring, it is very smooth Now let's take a look at image quality Here are photos taken with this lens at f1.4, f2, f2.8 and f4. I put some light in the background to show you the bokeh performance. So at f1.4 it looks a little bit soft but I think it is acceptable in most cases. And you can see as you lower the aperture it becomes sharper. f4 is pretty sharp for me. And here are some real life photos I want to show you. This is the background blur you can get with the large aperture. 30mm is a focal length that is most natural to human eyes. It's not too difficult to get a good composition. You can use it as an all-around lens. However, because of the lack of autofocus, it would perform better in a controlled environment. For example, I would recommend using this lens for food, for product, or for taking portrait for your family or a model who is sitting for you. Now let's start with the pros. I have already mentioned how small and lightweight it is. It's about the size of an egg, weighing only 180 grams. Second, it costs only 83 US dollars the day I make this video. So it's June 25th, 2022. So it's definitely one of the best deals you can get for a good quality 35mm lens with f1.4 aperture. There are not a lot of manufacturers who are willing to make fast lenses, especially not at this price. Which comes to my next point, low light performance. With the f1.4 aperture, you don't have to worry about taking photos at night anymore. Here are more low light photos to show you. And next, I think 35mm is the perfect focal lens. It's not too zoomed in or zoomed out, so it provides a normal or a natural view, and composition won't be too difficult. If you are a beginner looking for a prime lens, I think 35mm might be the best focal lens to begin with. Moving on to the cons. There are two things that bothers me a little. First is, of course, a manual lens, which might be a disadvantage for a lot of people, 
because you will be spending more time trying to focus by turning the focus ring. So it is surely more inconvenient taking sport photography or taking photos of animals or for street photography. And the second thing that bothers me a little is that um, also because it's a manual lens, you lose all the stabilization functions like active steady shot and catalyst brows. These kind of things just don't support a manual lens. So I guess it doesn't matter if you are only taking photos, but if you are taking videos, then this is how it looks like very shaky and you probably won't be able to fix that by stabilizing it during post. So unless your camera has in-body stabilization or you use a gimbal or a tripod, otherwise it's just not so useful in shooting videos. In terms of sharpness, I think this lens is more than enough. But I have to say, if sharpness is very critical to you, then you probably shouldn't count on this lens too much because honestly, there are other lenses out there that have autofocus and have better sharpness. For example, the Sigma 30mm lens, which is about three times more expensive, but I guess it's worth the money. So who is this lens for? I think if you have never used a manual lens, you want to try one, but you are not sure whether you will like it or not, then there is nothing better than this tiny, inexpensive and good quality TT Artisan 35mm f1.4 lens. Speaking of trying a manual lens, I have a video about all the cool techniques you can do with a manual lens. So check that video out and maybe you will find yourself enjoying using manual lens. By the way, before I end this video, I just want to mention that I'm currently working on a comparison video of TT Artisan 35mm f1.4 versus TT Artisan 50mm f1.2 in which I will put the photos side by side so if you are interested in these manual lenses please subscribe so that you won't miss the video if you like my videos please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video bye